Hey, what's up everybody? Been a while. Hope everybody's doing well. Did want to put out a video that I thought was quite interesting. Um, there was a recent post in Norway about some 23 elderly people. And of course, this is in business today. Um, and there's multiple articles. There's one here from The Hill. Uh, it says, Norway warns fra frail patients over 80 uh, of vaccine risk after death. And that was because some 23 individuals after receiving the Pfizer shot had mysteriously, put mysteriously in quotes, had passed away after receiving the jab shot. And it says, Norwegian Institute of Public Health has cautioned against vaccinating elderly people over 80 years of age, saying those with a short lifespan may not benefit from the jab. And this was as of the 16th. So that came out today. And so here in America, a lot of elderly people are basically, you know, up in arms, you know, family members with their pitchforks in hand saying, we need that vaccine, you know, for our, for our moms and for our grandmothers. You may want to think twice about being so hasty with the lives of your elders. And of course, Norway, of course, is investigating to see if uh, the jab was responsible. It's really interesting because I've asked numerous times, you know, the, the vaccine does not give you neither the live virus, nor does it give you a part of the dead virus, right? So that your body then mounts an immune response as a result of coming in contact with the proteins. But instead, it injects messenger RNA. Uh, which is just basically like a computer program that basically goes off in your body and then it creates a protein, right? It creates a protein and this protein is then what elicits a immune response. And many of my colleagues who have taken the vaccine have all had um side effects right everybody has had you know obviously the pain at the injection site some have had fevers and of course basically general body aches malaise uh, which is indicative of uh, your body basically having an immune response but if you're not receiving if you're not receiving the live virus and you're not receiving part of the dead virus i often do wonder how the body of course is then having a reaction as if you are coming in contact with the disease uh, because you're not. According to them, you're not. It's not giving you the disease. According to Pfizer, it's not giving you the disease in any way, shape, or form. And yet these individuals, and there have been many who have had very strong immune responses. And as a result, some have even lost their lives. There was another article here coming out of the New York Times that says, doctor's death after vaccine is being investigated as a physician in Florida developed an unusual blood disorder. And basically, um, the disorder that he developed was all his platelets just disappeared. His platelets just, they were like, you seen his platelets? I have no idea where they went. He, the doctor literally lost all of his platelets. It says health authorities are investigating the case of a Florida doctor who died from an unusually severe blood disorder 16 days after receiving the Pfizer jab. This is Dr. Gregory Michael, 56-year-old obstetrician and gynecologist in Miami Beach, received the vaccine from Mount, Sinai, from Mount Sinai Medical Center on December 18th and died 16 days later from a brain hemorrhage. <clears throat> and that was basically because his body um, basically created an autoimmune disorder where it basically attacked his, uh, he basically died of thrombocytopenia. And thrombocytopenia is just basically that your body just, you just don't have any clotting factors anymore. And so they couldn't figure out, um, like, but he basically, I believe he started having petechia, which is just like purple spots that he started developing on his body, which you can see in patients, for example, who have like forms of cancer, um, because patients that sometimes who have different types of cancers can have petechia, which is indicative of low platelets. And of course, as a result, um, you can bleed, you can bleed anywhere and just die. And then since you don't have any clotting factors, your body just can't form a clot and then you just bleed out, which is exactly what happened to this physician. And I had seen this report previously where the doctor was very healthy. He was an active and he was an active runner. He worked out. I've seen pictures of him. He looked like he was in very good shape. 
Um, and of course, according to his wife, who said he was, you know, the picture of health, it wasn't like a person who was obese. He had no um, medical history whatsoever. And he died within basically, you know, a little more than two weeks. And they found out because he had these petechia. He went to the doctor. They drew blood from him. And they just basically, when they looked at his blood cells, um, when they did, you know, um, I believe what they did, when they did a CBC, they found literally no clotting factors at all within his blood. They immediately started giving him transfusions to try to save his life. And unfortunately, the physician passed away. And of course, they're actively investigating and of course, not trying to attribute anything, of course, to the vaccine. There was a couple of articles that obviously had touched on the same thing. And the reason was because I had seen this article, I believe it was the week before, not this week, I think it was last week, where there was a doctor who had said that you should not be alarmed. And the person is Dr. Kelly Moore, who had said that people should not be unnecessarily alarmed if there are reports once we start vaccinating uh, basically the elderly, right? So if the elderly stop, dro start dropping dead, um, this doctor, Dr. Kelly Moore said, don't be alarmed. And I would be like, well, that would be something that you would want the public to be alarmed, right? If you're, if you know that your elderly patients are prone to having adverse reactions as a result of the vaccine, well, this would be information as a medical practitioner that you would want the public to know. And of course, this sort of information really isn't um, talked about in the mainstream media and for obvious reasons because, well, we're not going to go into that in this video. I'm trying not to get myself with another strike. And so this is actually something that individuals should be informed, right? When you, when you give someone a medication, it's the physician or the nurse's responsibility to inform the person, right? Because before the person can sign a consent form stating, yes, I consent to you giving me this medication, they have to be informed, right? And so, it, of course, it would be irresponsible of any practitioner to, of course, not relate these sort, this sort of information to many individuals. According to the CDC website, I believe there was just about over 100,000 people who had recently been vaccinated and 3% of them had some form of an adverse reaction, which is actually quite high. And of course, an adverse reaction, according to the CDC, was anything that required some sort of medical intervention, right? So most of these individuals had an anaphylactic experience, right? Where the person either developed low blood pressure, they developed a rash. Anaphylaxis can, of course, um, impede the airway where the airway becomes uh, constricted. And of course, the person has to be given like Benadryl. Uh, you can either give it Benadryl or, you, or you're going to be giving um, it via IV so that the so that the anaphylaxis can basically go away. And that's why many of these individuals who get vaccinated are required, or at least strongly recommended, to stay within the vicinity. Typically, they have you sit down in a chair for 15 minutes all the way up to 30 minutes because many individuals have had um, basically you know, it, uh, immune responses that are, of course, quite, quite prominent when it comes to um, typically, like I said, you might have some pain in the injection site because it is an intramuscular medication. You are injecting into the muscle. So, of course, you're going to have some sort of tenderness at the site. That's just that's typically normal. You might have um, you might feel like you might have like a low grade fever. You could feel what is referred to as malaise, which is just a like general body a fatigue, um, et cetera. Right. You have a very mild form. But many individuals have had anaphylactic uh responses, which is entirely different, which is typically usually very rare. And usually it's with indiv individuals who already have some sort of a um, history of some allergies, right? So maybe the person is like, for example, strawberry. Strawberries, dairy are typically things that from like a nursing's perspective that we would ask the patients, you know, do you, are you allergic to um, strawberries or things of that nature? Because you will more than likely have a reaction to uh, you more than likely have some sort of a anaphylactic reaction now in the hospital i can tell you from my experience that individuals who have said that they have a history of allergies are then being told well there's nothing in the vaccine that would cause you to have an adverse reaction so then the question is why are so many people having an adverse reaction right 
So if, if cause that's basically what um that's basically what I've been told at the hospital that I work at, you know, they're they, every single day um there's emails that are sent out on information about the vaccine. Um, and basically every single day, because the vaccine has to be thawed before it's administered. And then of course, if it, if it doesn't get administered within a timely fashion, it basically spoils it and you can't give it. And so every single day, multiple times, you know, on the night shift, we will hear overhead, anybody who wants the vaccine to come to this floor, et cetera, to receive the vaccine. And of course, many, many of my colleagues have had very, have had adverse reactions. They've had adverse reactions where they've had to um, take time off of work because they've become sick while not of course being um, of course being told that it there you're not receiving either a live vaccine or a dead vaccine which typically means you should not be having those type of reactions right this is not something that i typically specialize in but it is something of course i will have to do more reading in uh, to become more familiar solely for the purpose of being able to defend why i have no interest in taking the vaccine and of course if the hospital would make the choice that they're going to mandate it or for example like the state would make the choice that they would that they would mandate the vaccine i would subsequently leave the hospital and leave the state the only reason that i would take it is if i couldn't leave the country which my plan is to leave the country because i think america is basically going to collapse as a result of what's going on politically uh, within the country and financially within uh, with what they're doing with the currency at some point if everything will collapse and of course many americans will be adversely affected and so of course my goal is to leave and so that would be the only thing um unless <laughs> i plan like going to miami and then swimming to cuba and then taking a taking a plane to wherever it was i wanted to 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 move to but that of course currently is not something that i'm worrying about just yet although there is talks of course of about you know passports you know the the vaccine passports where you'll have to show some sort of identity identification uh, on certain airlines that i've seen so far not all of them i'm hoping that is not going to be the case because of course i would really not want to try to take this uh, vaccine just because of the stuff that i have read typically with a vaccine it's usually about a minimum of five years before a vaccine is basically given to the public this was given within a very short time frame, especially the one um, that is produced by Moderna. Um, after supposedly they had um, basically spliced the DNA of the of the virus, two weeks after the, you know they did like a genome project, two weeks after they had basically known the genetics of the virus, that they were like, oh, we've already got a vaccine. At two weeks it was like a weekend after afterwards and this is easily verifiable you can look this up i posted this on my twitter account previously um so this is of course you know something that probably most individuals are not aware of and of course even though individuals do receive the vaccine even in the pamphlets because i've read the i've read the pfizer pamphlet and it even says within the pamphlet that of course it doesn't give you the vax it doesn't give you um the, the, the you know it doesn't give you the disease uh, because they can't that's not how they that's not what they did with this particular uh, vaccine um and they're not sure if it will even give you the immunity that you're looking for right um that's why there was a nurse you know who got you know the virus about eight weeks or so after they had received the uh, the vaccine there was like an er nurse i forget where but i remember reading this it was like an er nurse that got the disease, you know, not long after uh, receiving the uh, the vaccine, and so the the excuse was one, it's not a hundred percent, right? No vaccine is, even the flu is not, and of course the other line of logic was well, he he didn't have enough time for his body to mount an immune response, which is ridiculous because the moment it enters into your body and your body has an immune response, it starts to build up antibodies. At least that's typically how it works when you take like the flu or when you do, or when you naturally have, uh, when you go through any other, other, other virus where your body will then subsequently produce antibodies. But again, I am not a specialist in these things. I'm just a nurse. 
So this is, of course, this is all information that I have to, of course, do research on. I try to do as much research on this particular topic. Um, one, so that I'm informed. Two, so that I can form, inform my colleagues because many of my colleagues are not informed at all. We really don't get a lot of quality information. We get regurgitated information that is basically given on the pamphlet, right? Um, and so people should be asking more questions and not be so hasty to inject themselves with something that they may have a very adverse effect. Like for example, these elderly people who subsequently lost their lives not long after, of course, being vaccinated.